everybody, it's Ros from North May or Fine Art. In today's video, I want to show you how to draw fur. And I will be working on Eve again for this piece. So we're going to work on this area, or at least some of this area. So, as you can see, I've got an awful lot of detailed lines here. Which is to give me um, the idea of where, where the the clumps of fur go. Now one thing that I want to say to you straight away before I even start this is a lot of people think that you have to draw every single piece of hair on an animal and that is so wrong. The best way to make fur look very realistic is to draw it in clumps. If you actually look at a dog, a cat, a, a whatever, any animal, yes, there are individual strands of fur or hair or feathers or whatever it happens to be, but when you actually look at them together, they make clumps. And that is the best way to actually draw fur. And it's the, the best way to get a realistic look. So this is what we're going to do today. And we're going to work, first of all, I'm going to work on this area here. So what I want to do first off is just lighten up these lines so I can just about still see them, but they're not going to actually be visible on the drawing once I've got the colour down because this area is actually quite light. just gives me the, the impression, once I've almost completely got rid of them, of where things still need to go. And the colours that I'm actually using today are a combination of browns, greys and I've even got a cream and I've got light flesh as well. Because although you wouldn't assume that a dog would have light flesh colour in their fur, it's actually surprising how many different colours there are in a dog's fur. So we're going to start down here and I can see on my reference photo that this first clump here is very very light so what I'm going to do straight away is add some cream to it. Now another bit of advice for you is when you're drawing fur or feathers or whatever it happens to be that you're drawing I would recommend that you draw or put your pencil marks in the direction that the fur or the feathers are going. Don't use circular motions. You want your finished piece to look like realistic fur and you need it to follow the curve that it's actually going in. So I'm going to now add cream you can still just about see the lines that have gone there but I'm actually going to add cream a lighter covering of cream on the rest of this area now because this is just the under layer and there's going to be plenty more layers over the top I don't have to be that overly careful about where how I put it down So there we go. I've now got cream on this whole section here. But this section is actually separated into five or six different clumps. So now I'm going to move on to a brown colour. But I only want very, very light coverage of this brown. So I'm hardly touching the paper at all. This paper that I'm actually using is from a company called Canson and it's a mixed media paper and it's 200 GSM but I just find it really nice for doing smaller portraits on. It's a nice, it's a good weight paper. It's got a really nice tooth to it. So I use this paper. It comes on a pad 
and I actually find it a really nice paper to use when I'm doing smaller portraits. Now before I go any further I'm just going to go over where those pencil lines were with just a small covering of this brown but I'm not pushing down at all hardly touching the paper because I just want the impression of this brown like that Now all this underneath here is actually a slightly dark colour so I'm just going to add a bit of this brown all over so that I know that this whole area here is going to end up being darker. And underneath this one is also this clump of fur here. Now when you're working on things like fur it lies in layers and I've had several people speak to me lately about how do you get the highlights and shadows. Now, when you're working on a reference photo, there's automatically a light source. And the light source on this photo that I'm using of Eve, the light source is coming from sort of the direction of the camera. So the light is actually hitting Eve in the face, which is why the fur all around the nose and the muzzle is going to be lighter. And the very top of the head here. But there will be shadows and the shadows are underneath the higher clumps of fur and you'll see that a lot when I'm working that if you can see on this section here that I worked on yesterday these very light portions of the fur are really nice and cream in colour and they're very very light and there's a lot of highlights on them whereas the fur that's underneath is much darker because these light areas of the fur are cast in shadows. And that's something that you need to think about when you're drawing is where are your shadows and your highlights going to be. So I'm now going to come around here and I can see that there is actually a shadow going down there because this piece of fur here is above this bottom piece. So there will be automatically a shadow cast and there's also a shadow underneath this section of fur because this is higher than this one and also the one that's underneath it. So there is actually a shadow and the shadow goes all the way down the edge of this section of fur because it's higher. There is actually a slight shadow cast all the way down. Now I'm constantly looking at my reference photo and I can see that on these pieces of fur there are different shades of creams and beiges and browns and there's even some grey in it. Now the grey is predominantly where the, the shadows are. So I've got my grey somewhere. There we go. And I just, now I'm just going to put a light layer of this grey where I know the shadows are the deepest. Because shadows aren't all the same gradient, they're not all the same depth. Depending on how far underneath something or how far away something is, the shadow will differ. And there is a shadow coming down here, but it doesn't go all the way to the end because the end of the fur at the very bottom, light is hitting that because there's nothing directly above that bit. 
So the shadow goes, I'd say about two thirds of the way down that hair, but it gets lighter as it goes down. And then the shadow again is darkest right underneath this piece of fur here. Please excuse my dog sighing. She doesn't find my videos very interesting. Now there is also a very definite line and it's a dark, dark line going up in between those pieces of fur. So instead of using a brown, I'm going straight in with my grey because I want to get the depth straight away of the colour. So now I'm going to roll up this one, but I'm using very little pressure here. Just want to get a hint of the grey. So I can see that we need just a touch more of the brown just going up the side of there. And there's a small bit of brown, it doesn't go all the way to the end of this piece of fur, but it's just along this section here there is actually some of the brown. Now as you can see I'm almost flicking the colour onto this piece of fur and that's because I want to get the impression of individual strands of hair without drawing all the individual strands because that's just far too time consuming. And if you were to draw the individual strands it would end up making your piece look like the dog has got very very wiry stiff fur. So just Getting the impression of the strands of fur is a much better way of doing it. It's quite dark up here. So I'll add more colour up here at this section. Like so. Well, I'll come back in with my grey. Because obviously under here it's casting a lot of shadow. Whereas this outside edge that's getting hit and getting more light on it has got obviously less shadow. But there is a very definite shadow just there as well. Now it's looking quite rough at the minute. That doesn't matter because I will be blending it out. Fur is very, very soft, naturally very, very soft. And I want to keep the soft look so I'm using my colour shape pen and today I'm using my number two and it's a flat chisel one this this white one here so what I will do I'm not using circular motions with my blender I'm blending in the direction of the fur because you want to keep it looking realistic so I'm using the very very end of the chisel tip and I'm going up and down in the direction of the fur. Now it doesn't matter whether you're using the colour shapers or you're using uh, a blending stump or even if you're using um, some sort of oldless mineral spirit you still want to be working in the direction of the fur because you want to keep it looking realistic. For very, very tiny, tiny details, I'll turn the colour shaper on its side and I will just use the very, very corner edge of the colour shaper to get into those tiny details. Now, because there's a variety of colours on these pieces of fur and I want to keep some of them very light, I'm going to come back in with the cream. 
No, I tell a lie, it's not cream, it's ivory. And I'm going to come back in with the ivory and I'm going to go over some of this brown because I actually want it to be slightly lighter than it is. Again, I'm following the line of the fur. This is really important when you're drawing fur, is to make sure you follow the line of the fur. You want it to look like it's, it's actually sitting the right way on the animal that you're drawing. It's the same with feathers. It's the same with um, coarse, like coarse, thick hair on a horse. It all works in the same way. You follow the reference photo and you see which way the fur is actually lying and you copy that. Now I'm going to come in with some tape and if you didn't see yesterday's video I have a fantastic tip for you and I will just refresh you in your memory just in case any of you didn't see yesterday's video. This tape here is it's a, it's a cloudy tape, it's not clear, you can't see through it very well. It's called invisible tape or magic tape and you get it on a plastic dispenser like this. You can also buy rolls of it on its own um, without the dispenser, but I find the dispenser to be so much easier. And this tape in particular is absolutely fantastic for removing pencil from your drawings. As you can see, I've also got lots of other pencils in my hand. There was a discussion about this this morning as well. A lot of people are guilty of holding pencils in their non-drawing hand. So, I'm now going to come back through. And I just want to highlight the edge of this piece here. Now, it doesn't matter what, what pencil you actually use, because you're only using the sharp, and sharp point. And as you can see, this point is lovely and sharp. So with the fine point of the pencil, I am just going to come down here along that section there and just take that bit of colour off and also a small bit just there that I want to take off. And as you can see, that's lightened it up nicely. So to carry on now, I want to take my cream and I want to just Add a tiny bit there. Because I want it to look really natural like that. I'm now going to take my dark grey again. And I'm just going to bring that shadow down here ever so slightly. Like that. Now, again, it's always a good idea to have really nice sharp points on the end of your pencils. And if you have a nice sharp point, you can make really nice smooth edges. Which is really important when you're working with clumps of fur because you need it to look natural. You need it to look like a natural clump and not like you've just drawn random clumps everywhere. So I'm going to get my brown again. I'm going back in just here. Add a bit of brown back to this area. And again, I'm going to take my tape because I just want to square this end up ever so slightly. Because it's actually quite a, a square area. And as you can see, that's taken off a really nice, clean area of colour. So what I'm going to do now is get my grey again. And I'm just going to tidy up that edge, like so. Like that. And I 
I want that to be a nice smooth variation from the brown to the whitest area so we'll go over that with my ivory sorry not cream I keep calling it cream if you hear me call this pencil cream it's not it's ivory my brain doesn't seem to be working today right so we've done that area there and I've just spotted on my reference photo that this section here should actually be slightly slightly more curved rather than straight so I'll we'll pull that back off like that and I can come in come in on the lighter grey this time I just want to make just a small shadow around this area that's curved because it should be much more like that. Never think you've made a mistake. If you if you do something a particular way and then you look at the reference photo again and it's not exactly as the reference photo shows, it is absolutely fine. You don't need to be worrying that you've made a mistake, you've got it all wrong. Drawing is meant to be enjoyable. And if you're stressing about something, you're not enjoying it. And I would love more people to actually get into their drawing and enjoy what they're doing rather than stressing about the processes. These hints and tips that I'm giving you are hopefully here to, to make life a bit easier for you, to, to make you see that nothing is that hard and that everything can be fixed even if there is a slight issue with a certain part of your work or whatever. I used to take my drawing so seriously and I would throw a whole piece away if I didn't get it absolutely perfect and I would stress out about it and it didn't do me any good because I wasn't actually enjoying the process. Now I'm enjoying it so much more because I've relaxed a lot more. Now I'm going to move on to this section here and I'm going to take that the line work out of that area because I'll just get my brush and give it a quick brush over because I want to leave this as a whole clump and this is a nice light clump because it's on the top it's one of the higher clumps and it's, it's one of the top pieces of fur this will stay nice and light we don't need to be adding too many shadows. So I'm coming up. split as it comes up here so you've got that section at the top and this section at the bottom and then there's a very definite shadow which is in between but I don't want a harsh pencil line to be in there so I'm going to take that out before I add the shadow So now I'm going to come in with my grey. Although I'm using a dark grey, I'm not using very much pressure at all. So I don't need to worry about it getting too dark. If I push down very hard, it would obviously make it very dark. But because I'm only using very light pressure, it only puts a certain amount of the colour on. There's that. Shadow in between the two pieces. Now I'm just going to bring this line down for it to 
come down here because this is two pieces, two clumps of hair together. But I want to be able to see a dividing line between the two. Like so. So now I'm going to tidy up the edge. Like that. And then these white clumps up, that are coming up here all kind of intermingle. But there's still definition between them. So if you find that using your pencil at the normal angle, even if it's quite sharp, doesn't give you the fine the fine line that you're after, hold your pencil up much higher and you'll find that that will give you the nice fine line that you want. Like that. And then come down to this here. Now obviously the lines aren't that perfect in between here and these are meant to be showing that there is shadow and there is differences in the colour variations. Just add a small bit of colour to there like that. But that has to stay quite light because of the fact that the top the, the top pieces of fur that are actually coming from the centre, almost the centre parting of the dog if you like, and the, the coming out at the angle, so they have to stay quite light because of the fact that the top pieces of hair. Now there's a couple more pieces that have light highlights but they have got some brown on them which are here. So I'm just going to go over with the cream first because I want the light undertones which I can then keep as the highlights once I have the brown. Like that. Now I'm going to rub out the harsh pencil lines around these areas now before I add the brown because it will be a lot more difficult to erase them once I've got more colour on. And again I'm just using a flicking motion almost to get the, the pencil lines off. Because I don't want to delete the colour as well. I don't want to remove the colour from the from the drawing mat. I just want to delete the pencil. So if you just flick very, very carefully. Now I'm going to take the brown. And I'm going to come just from here because it's the lower portions here. So I'm going to come just here. And just add a very, very small, I'm hardly touching the paper at all here because I just want the smallest amount of colour on this. And I'm doing it on the bottom section of the hair because that's where the shadow is going to be. And then there's another section just there, which comes around here. Like so. And then there's a very definite shadow between these pieces here. So I'm going to put the brown in first so I know where the shadow is. Like that. Now I'm going to just go along the edge of that there to remove any colour that may have built up because that is another light clump and I want to keep it as a clump like that add a small bit more colour to this one so you can see that there's definite highlights and shadow on this piece here like that now I am going to keep working on this because there's a few more bits of colour I want to add. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, I've got the pencil here. So I'll just do this while she's with me. This is going to add a really nice, rich tone to that shadow. So it shows that it's still hair, 
still the fur of the dog, but it is in shadow. If it was completely grey, it wouldn't look realistic as fur. So you have to have the brown in the shadow, like that. And again, the brown will go up there on that shadow and around there, like that. There we go. Right, I'm going to keep working on this piece and I will come back later and show you how I've got on. So as you can see, I've continued to work up the rest of the ear and I have got all my highlights and all my shading in place now. And I just want to add the final little touches of the shadows because the shadows are so important for any piece. You should always get your shadows in and make sure that they're as dark as they need to be. Because if your shadows aren't dark enough, your highlights don't show up as much as they should do. If you can hear that whistling behind me, it's my fire. We're in the middle of a, well, a gale, I suppose, and it whistles down the chimney. And unfortunately it makes quite a racket, and so I do apologise if you can hear that. Or if you can hear the dog snoring. So I'm just adding these last couple of highlights, shadows. I'll be adding a couple of highlights in a minute as well. Just to make sure that all the values are right and that everything is just as it should be. say shadows are just about done. And I'm just going to go back through very quickly with my white ivory. I will get it right in the end I promise. And then I just want to come through again just before I finish up with some tape. Now my advice for the tape would be to don't try and do too much with it. Um, what I mean by that is don't just try and stick to using one piece for a whole project because you will end up making a mess. It won't take the colour off properly and you'll be left with this, it just won't look good, basically. So every sort of couple of minutes or every couple of uses, replace it, get a new piece um, and then go from there because you don't want to ruin it. When you've spent all this time working on a piece, you don't want to then ruin it by using dirty tape. Just want to take a little bit of that off because it's just a little bit too dark. Like that. And then I'll come back through. Now this has actually happened just purely by chance, but if you can see the pen the actual coloured pencil that I was using with the tape is the same colour that I'm now using to fix any little mistakes. It just saves time. It saves time when having to root around for the pencil that you want if you use the actual pencil that you're planning on or doing any touch-ups with. 
and again if you want to get any specific uh, texture using the tape just change the way that you actually apply the pressure to the tape if you want to get a specific sort of flicked fur looks then just put the paper, put it down I don't know if you can see it there, no you can where are you? There. so if you can just see at the very very edge of the screen there if you wanted to get specific fur just flick it like that and you can see that the colour's going onto the top of the tape so you can actually see the effect that you're going to get and that would then take the colour off in onto that effect which is really handy and as you can see I'm, I'm turning it very often to make sure that I'm using the cleanest section that I can I'm just adding the last few little bits of highlights and I would say that that was almost done now if you've enjoyed watching this video please give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and if you want to see any more of my work then you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest and Twitter just by searching for North Mayo Fine Art. Thanks for watching.